Double click that there. And we'll log in. We're using a PC, so I'll pick the PC version. Uh, and today I'm going to do the Airtable experiment, so I'll pick the mechanics laboratory. We'll find the Airtable experiment in the list of experiments here. And we'll click it and we can start this experiment since it's already installed. Fairlab Academy will load up. Uh, and since I speak no Russian or German and a little bit of Turkish, we'll go with English. Hey there, welcome to the VR Hi. Lab Academy. I Thanks. I a science fan. We will be experimenting Airtable experiment. First, we will do straight line motion with constant velocity with Airtable. Since there is no net force acting on the moving object, Puck, it moved on a straight line with a constant velocity. The average velocity depends only on the total displacement, x, that occurs during the time, t. The position, x, t, of an object moving in a straight line with constant velocity is given as a function of time as the total displacement x0 plus vt. If the object is at the origin of the initial position, x0 equals 0, the equation of the motion becomes at any time, total displacement as a function of time is equal to vt. So, the object travels equal distance in the equal time intervals along a straight line. Thanks, Amy. Okay, so uh, I can move around here with uh, WASD keys. Anybody who's played uh, first-person shooters should be familiar with those. I can pick up the uh, experiment card here with the left button. Clicking on the theory, I can scroll down through the different theories. Um, go home, I can put it back with the right button. And uh, let's try and take some data here. Let's see. Uh, we've got our spark timer, which is going to give us dots uh, 10 times per second. So I'll go ahead and uh, just do the constant velocity experiment. I'll pick up the puck, and I will shoot it down there with some launch force of one time. So we can see uh, some data appeared on the screen over here. This is a velocity versus time uh, set of data. We can look at our data by using the experiment card. If we go to the experiment, straight line with constant velocity, we can see our position and time data from the spark timers. So time zero, obviously we're at position zero, and then at times 0.1, position 0.06, and so on and so on. All right, so of course this isn't very useful to us right now, but we can use this to draw a graph. As she explained to us when we draw the graph, the graph of position versus time should give us a straight line. So there's our x position, there's our time, and this gives us a nice straight line whose slope is 0.6 meters per second, right there. Okay. If we want to run this experiment again, maybe with a larger force to see what happens to the velocity, we can reset it using this button. Reset that. I'll increase my launch force to two times. Um, it's going to go faster, so maybe let's increase our spark timer to 20 hertz. I can grab the puck and launch it. Sure enough, now it's timing twice as quickly, but you can see the uh, positions are actually the same, um, which means it's uh, probably gone twice the velocity. Let's find out. We can draw a graph with this, and you can see immediately the slope of this graph is much steeper than the original graph. We can go over here, we can check our velocities at each time. Sure enough, yeah, our velocity is 1.2 meters per second. We could reset this again. Increase the spark timer rate. We can keep the spark timer rate the same too, it won't make a difference. But we could increase the launch force all the way up to, say, four times can pick up either of the pucks and launch it. 
Here we can draw this. You can see it's become much steeper. Right. Now we have a velocity of somewhere around 2.4-ish. Right. We could find the slope of this line here by finding some points on it and finding the slope of it. Okay, there's our motion at a constant velocity on an air table. Reset that. We could now try a motion with a constant acceleration. If we go back here. Right now, of course, we don't have any data. But we can go back and check out the theory of it. And here we have an inclined air table uh, with no friction. So a puck will slide straight down um, and its acceleration should be constant. So that is, its velocity should increase all the time. The rate of change of the velocity would be the acceleration. So the velocity is going to be changing every second instead of being constant. Um, and so the distance that it travels will be changing also. We'll see how that looks. So here's the theory. The theory is, since it starts at rest and from position zero, its position at any time will be one half a t squared. And its position will be proportional to time squared. So we should get, when we graph x versus t, we should get a parabola. Let's try it. We'll give it a shot. We'll come over here to the incline table, and we can grab it and just push it down a little bit, maybe to 4 degrees or so. I can grab this. You know what? Let's reduce our spark timer to 10, actually. I can grab this puck. And I can start it off at the top of the table, let it accelerate downwards. There we go. You can see, when we take a look at this, uh, we can actually grab this uh, laser pointer here. You can see that these are spaced farther apart as you go along. Right here, they're very close together. And now they're spacing farther and farther apart. Oops, didn't want to do that. I can start this collision. There they go. They launch off at each other. They collide here in the middle. And then they slide back uh, away from each other. So we can check out what that data looks like on here. We've got velocities before and after the collision. Before the collision, 0 0.61, 0 0.60 in both the x and y directions. Here's our x velocity. Here's our y velocity, our second x and second y for the second puck on the right, we can see they have equal masses. And so we predict after the collision, depending on the angle that they're coming in at, uh, we predict after the collision, these should have pretty similar um, velocities. And sure enough, they do have very similar velocities. We can see uh, the graph of their velocities before and after the collision weight. Try that again. There we go. Uh, we can see their overall velocity down here, 0.96. And if we draw a graph of this velocity, there we go. We're seeing the velocities before and after graphed out here. Right here it is before, here it is after. We can see these velocities are uh, conserved, they're the same. Okay, and of course, since the mass doesn't change, the momentum also is going to be the same. We can reset this experiment, increase the launch force if we want, get some different velocities here, much faster collision. Here we may not have enough, actually, we may need to increase the spark timer rate, so let's reset this. Increase our spark timer rate, up that launch force. Collide them. There we go, we can see a much faster speed down there. Come on, Amy, draw my graph for me. Well, we can see it at least. We can see 1.65, 1.45. Identical x and y velocities coming in and coming out 1.65, 1.45.
momentum conserved. We've confirmed it. Momentum, cons momentum is conserved, everyone. Don't worry. Physics is safe. Okay. Uh, we're about done here. Oh, um, I realize I've spent this entire time with green hands when that's not my favorite. I can change my gloves. Yeah, there we go. A nice, uh, a nice dark glove. That's what I like. Uh, if we ever uh, have a problem or we need to um, restart this experiment, we can just come over here and exit the experiment, or we can come over on the left side here and restart it. For now, we're about done, so I'm going to go ahead and exit this experiment. And we're back at our menu. The end. That was the Airtable experiment uh, on VR Lab Academy.